Hi, so this problem is not actually done by request. Instead, I just was doing it earlier today with a student and liked its solution process so much, I wanted to cover it with you guys. Um, it's from the 2015 AMC 10A problem 21 and 12A problem 16. Try not to skip around in the video too much because I really want you to see the, the process by which we realize what's going on in the problem and then clinch up on the answer. So let's see that. Tetrahedron ABCD. What's a tetrahedron? That's a fancy name for triangular pyramid. But if you were a triangular pyramid, which would you rather be called? This sounds cooler, right? So tetrahedron ABCD, basically polyhedron tetra four, right? Okay, so uh, has it's got four sides. It has AB equal to five, AC three. It got all these lengths, right? Three, four, five, probably giving us three, four, five so that we recognize it as the right triangle. And then CD, 12 fifths root two down there. What's going on? We don't know yet. Just leave it aside. Um, what is the volume of the tetrahedron? So initially you need to draw the base, right? Because you probably want to think of the volume formula. The volume of a triangular pyramid is one third the area of the base times the height. Okay, one third the, it's a volume for a cone too, by the way. So uh, how are we going to do this? Uh, let's just draw the, the base basically and kind of try to draw it so it's like 3D. We'll come over here, right? And make it like a three to four ratio, I guess, somewhat. Maybe that's not quite three to four. I'm all good with it. Uh, we will call this three, four, five. So what are these things? AB is five, AC is three. That means A has to go with the vertex where five and three meet. That's how you want to think of that whenever you're labeling. Look for the letter that's common to both sides and put that at their vertex, um, just for speed purposes. So B will go here, C will go here. All right, then what? We got another part, D, coming off of the board in a three-dimensional fashion, maybe up to like right here or so. We don't really know, right? We're going to come this way. We'll call that D. It does tell us that BD is four, AD is three, and this part right here is 12 fifths root two. At this point in the problem, right, you don't quite know if you've drawn it correctly. Don't worry about that too much. We need to think conceptually. And at this point in the problem, this is where your experience of doing the last, you know, 14, whatever, some odd years of AMCs at that point and math competitions in general, for most of you, that's, it might not be immediately recognized. But if you've done all of those tests and you've really been doing the AOPS books and whatever you can get your hands on with this insatiable desire to solve creative problems, there's something about 12 fifths. Do you know what it is? Pause the video and think about it. And when you return, which might be now, uh, we want to think about it this way. I, it just comes to me like that. And the reason is, is I've seen it so many times. And that's again what they point out in AOPS. Solve thousands of problems, the recognition of what's going on gets easier. So let's just kind of explore this three, four, five for a second. There's a connection between it and that value that you saw up there. First off, a general concept that I want you always to remember is that if you have any triangle, you can take any base times its height and it has to equal any other base times its height. Okay, that's always true. It's based on the area. We just took out the halves, right? And so for a right triangle, it becomes even easier because the three and the four can be considered an associated base and height. So it would be three times four equals, what other base could we possibly use? Well, yeah, four and three, but that doesn't matter. How about the five? The five on the hypotenuse with its associated height. Do you notice anything yet? You divide by that five, you're going to get 12 fifths. And so for the experienced student, when they saw that value right there, it probably triggered something in their mind and said, I bet it's connected. And it's that realization that gets you past first base and maybe to second base on this problem. Okay, so what does it mean? Why, how would it play in? Let's get an idea here. Let's call this, you know, we'll call this here. We'll drop the altitude down to side AB. And that's going to be, we'll call it E, okay? And that's 90 degrees, and we know that that's 12 fifths. And incidentally, the three, four, five right here, the main one we started with, would also have an altitude. 
that's going to be kind of hidden in there the way I've drawn it. It's underneath this C, D to D, E. And that's also going to be 12 fifths, but we kind of have a problem right now. And you can't just make the assumption. I mean, I guess you can technically. But what you kind of want to do is ask, are we sure that the altitude from C to AB is going to be the same point, E, for instance, that I've called it E, as it is from D? How do we resolve that? Well, this is kind of how I think of it. You tell me if it works for you. I want you to imagine that triangle ABC is a piece of cardboard, right? It's a cutout right triangle that you can move. And I want you to imagine that you have taped um, little blue pieces of tape that come out like this. And you've taped it here as well so that, right, so that you can fold it like a piece of paper flipping up, right? Uh, I got a PetSmart ad here. And so you can imagine it folding off the board like this, folding off the board, right? And so that's all you're kind of picturing is you're going to take this point C and you're going to fold up the cardboard so that C is actually going to become what? D. And why does this work? Well, because this length is 3 AC, but so was AD. And since they're both 3, it's like the DA is the side AC lifted off the plane of the board. And in addition, the side BD is 4, it matches the BC, so that makes sense if we pulled this off and D would be kind of, you could consider it C prime perhaps, right? A, a rotated position of C, but AB has never left the plane of the board. So doesn't it make sense that the altitude from D to E and the altitude from C to E would still be the same point? They would both meet at E. It should make absolute sense, but with that realization and conclusion, we come to the next journey of our problem. We're well past second base at this point. It's going to be, why does this matter? 12 fifths, 12, man, if we don't know what that is and we're doing problem 21, scary stuff, you better learn it. Got to get it down, right? It's simply 45, 45, 90, X, X, and X root two. But wait a minute, that would mean, yes, that would mean that this uh, tetrahedron hasn't been drawn quite accurately. Instead, where we should have probably drawn it, if I erase BD, it, it was more properly drawn from the beginning. I'm used to my zoom screen where the lines just erase when you draw them. It would probably have come up to here and then down to here, but this is still 90 degrees. And so what does that mean? If I come down here this way uh, and then underneath is still this other side, we have 12 fifths, 12 fifths. Where is the 12 fifths root two? The 12 fifths root two is this side right here, which means the angle opposite it, which would be what angle? Angle C E D coming from C underneath D over to E, it would go straight up, straight up, meaning what? That D not only is at the apex, but the altitude from D to the plane of the board that ABC lies in is DE. DE is the altitude. That angle right here, you can't see it because it's you know drawn in 2D and I'm not the best at it. That is gonna be a 90 degree angle coming straight up to hit point D and then down to here, right off the board. Sorry if I didn't draw it very well, but I hope you can follow the thought process. And since that's a 90 degree angle, um, we can do our formula now. Basically, H is going from E straight up to D. So H is going to be your 12 fifths. And what is B? Capital B and not lowercase b. Why capital? Because it's an area, not a length, like the lowercase b and base times height. So capital B for that to distinguish the area of the base is simply three times four over two. It's six uh, times six times one third. Cancel into here to get two. Two times 12 fifths, 24 fifths. Kind of a fun problem. It, it all falls apart once you realize that's a 45, 45, 90. You're at third base at that point. All you have left to conclude is, wait, how does that work? And maybe you got lucky and drew it exactly right the first time. Highly unlikely. Other questions are, why didn't they give us a picture? 
It's precisely for that reason. It would have been too easy if you had a picture. The goal is for you to come to this realization. This is the aha moment that leads to the end of the problem. And you don't just think you're right. It's guaranteed. There's no way. We know that it meets at E. We know it's a 45, 45 up here and 90 down at E. Okay. If you didn't understand, leave a comment. I'll try to explain it better. I hope I've done well. I hope you're doing well. We have not that many days left. 10 days, maybe 11 days, something like that. Better get back to your studies. See you guys later.